So uh, number nine is you have an equation f of x has two constants, a 2 to the x plus b. So show me 2 to the x with your arms, everybody. 2 to the x, what point does it go through? 0, 1, very good. And then it's going to go um, uh, times a, which will make it stretch or shrink, and then plus b means it goes up. So before we look at f of 3, I'm going to give you two points here. This point, 0, 8, which is a good place to start. f of 0 equals a times 2 to the 0 plus b. And what is the y value? The x value is 0. What's the y value for this point? Hey, and that's f of 0, right? So we can, instead of saying f of 0, we can say 8. So one point can help us look at a times, what's 2 to the 0? 1, so it's a plus b. There's one equation. Let's do another one. Here's a point, x and f of x. And I think that's a 2. But I'm not sure. Yeah, 220. So then we go f. Let's go over here. f of 2. And so you go a times 2 to the 2 plus b is equal to what? 20. So that's what f of 2 is. It's 20. So this is going to be 20 is equal to 4 times a plus b. And there's your second equation. Does anything confusing happen there, or are you okay with that? f of a is your y, a is your x. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. And what some people do is they'll take the opposite of the multiply top of left and right by negative 1. And go ahead and write that. Negative 8 equals negative a minus b over 20 equals 4a plus b. And add them up in a column. 20 minus 8 is 12. 4a minus a is how many a? 3a, and then b minus b is 0. So then you can just say that 12 divided by 3 is equal to a. So I know that a is 4. What will b become? 4. So um, a f of x is a is 4 and b is 4. So we have 4 times 2 to the x plus 4. And so now, what is the question now? <laughs> we did all that work. We haven't even answered the question. f of 3, right? So then we'll do that. f of 3 equals 4 times 2 to the third plus 4 equals 4 times 8 plus 4. 32 plus 4 is 36. Answer should be 36. Anybody get that? Get 36? Nice. What? <laughs> but if you notice, that's a lot of, of algebra 2. Not a lot of, of uh, pre-calculus in it. It's almost all algebra, plugging in x's and y's. Now let me just tell you one thing about this. Can everybody put a box around this? This is what scientists do. They get this relationship like, oh, it looks exponential. I don't know what the coefficient is. I don't know what the vertical shift is, but I know it's exponential. So all you have to do is get a bunch of data. And all, well, what do you need for something like this? How many points do you need for a plus a times 2 to the x plus b? What do you, how many points do you need? Two. That's what scientists do. 
What I just showed you is probably the most important thing for uh, science that, that I've shown you all quarter. Because this, this type of thing, think about it. Let's say you, you have, uh, let's say you have time here and you have velocity. And you see it do something like that. That's what the data looks like. Okay. And you kind of go, well, you know, it'd be nice to come up with an equation for that. And somebody says, well, it looks logarithmic. It looks like log base A of X. Okay. So you might say it's log base 2 of X. And you might say, well, if it is log base 2 of X, what is the pitch of it? Okay. And what is the vertical shift of it? You also might say, maybe it's shifted left and right a little bit. So maybe you're going to have, instead of x here, it's x minus c. Well, now how many variables are in there? Three. So how many points do you need to make it? Three. Isn't that great? So I mean, this is, this is pretty impressive, uh, f of t. Up here is uh, an example that we're going to use. For this, this is what we're doing at the Mall of America on Wednesday. We're doing exactly that. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Sir.